this is the start of the computer systems uh, section of the notes and the text references for what I'm going to talk about on this page are 3.2 and 3.4. I'm going to start by just talking about a, a typical structure or I should maybe say an abstract uh, computer structure. Um, they've evolved over time to become more complex than what I'm going to show you but this is the starting idea. So I've got the processor at the top and I'm going to draw a line down the page here and uh, this line is our system bus. So let's label that. And the system bus used to be a uh, collection of wires, uh, while well, they still are essentially traces on a motherboard. Uh, there used to be a number of lines for data, a number of lines for addresses, and some uh, control signals. Um, nowadays, uh, a desk or a, a PC will have a PCIe uh, motherboard, and so PCIe's peripheral component interconnect, and E stands for express. It uses um, differential signaling, and the structure is different than what I'm going to show you here. Um, with PCIe, you've got a whole bunch of end-to-end -end connections going through kind of a central switch. Um, whereas here we just have one set of lines and all the devices are connected to it. So let's draw some of those devices. On the left, wrong color, let's get some blue here. So uh, the GPU, as you may know, is a graphics processing unit. A long time ago, computers didn't have GPUs, uh, then I forget who made them first, but anyway, they used to be separate cards. Now they're often integrated right in with the processor itself. But um, I'm going to just throw it attached to the bus. And going down the left hand side, your processor needs a clock to keep track of time, and you're going to have a number of I.O. devices. Um, such as your USB host is what the um, the thing that you plug into is called, uh, and you know you've got your uh, network adapters and um, your uh, various types of uh, things that you can connect. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about that when we get to talking about the board that we're using in the lab. So collectively, these are called peripheral devices. And I'm just going to do a dot 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 at the bottom here, um, because those there's usually at least tens of I.O. devices. On the chip that we're using in the lab, just ballparking it, I would say there's probably uh, 40, 50 I.O. devices on it. There's quite a large number. Over on the right, I'm going to draw three types of uh, memory. So right at the top, we've got the flash memory. So it doesn't lose the contents when you turn the power off. And it's usually used to store the BIOS. I uh, don't know if you've heard of that before. It's the basic input output system. And it sets up the hardware enough to get you to the point where you can load uh, the bootloader out of secondary storage, like off your hard drive. Get that into memory and start running that, and that gets your operating system loaded. And once that's done, your, your BIOS is no longer uh, needed. So this is the, the startup code. Okay, and flash, whoops. Flash is um, nice because it doesn't lose its contents, but it's pretty slow and it has other limitations that we'll talk about. So you typically have several uh, gigabytes of what we call RAM, uh, random access memory. So this will be your instruction and 
data memory. If you've got your instructions and data sharing the same memory, that's called a von Neumann architecture. Uh, that's the von Neumann that was part of the Manhattan, Manhattan Project, but also was in on uh, designing one of the first computers uh, in the States. And he had described it in a paper, and so that idea of putting your instructions and data together got named after von Neumann. Uh, the other alternative is to have your instructions and data separate, which actually is the way um, things work in the chip that we're using in the lab, and that's called a Harvard architecture. Okay, so um, the other kind of memory, and we don't really refer to it as memory, is our secondary storage. So your hard disk drive or your solid state drive. Hard disk drive um, you know, uses spinning magnetized platters, whereas the solid state drive basically uses a bunch of flash chips uh, stuck together. Okay, so this is our secondary storage. I didn't get the, uh, the notes over here, the graphics and the peripheral devices in the right color. It's going to take me a while to, to train my brain to do that. So this is it for uh, page one, fairly short one.